Okay, just talk. We're rolling. Right. Go ahead. It's fine. We're back on the rink live at Hockey Day Minnesota. I'm Jess Myers along with McHatton. Happy to be joined by Sherry Dickerman, assistant coach for the MSU Mavericks women's team. Uh, we just talked to your boss. Uh, you're, on a, you're on a pretty big one-game winning streak. Congrats on, on last weekend. Tell us about the win over the Gophers after uh, 53 straight non-wins. <laughs> I guess I didn't re realize the, the length of the streak. So um, after kind of, I guess, getting caught up through Twitter and seeing how long it had been, um, <laughs> Because I remember the games here when the sweep happened. It was on our alumni weekend, and all of us alums raced out on the rink at <laughs> ASA to like <laughs> celebrate the the Saturday win because they'd won Friday, and we're like, "Wow, that was awesome!" <laughs> and then uh, to kind of realize the last win at Ritter was, I was in the net, and I remember the face-off <laughs> play. We scored on Moosey, the face-off play, and uh, so it's kind of like, "Wow, that was." kind of a, a long time ago and, and the excitement of our players like I didn't even see the celebration because I told coach after coach Harrington like he had me like in a chokehold <laughs> against the glass in the celebration and he's like I didn't see your team celebrate I'm like yeah ne me neither I was trying to get air but <laughs> it was awesome and it, it was exciting for them exciting for our program and I think just proved to our team like we're always right there, but kind of to get over that hump, I think, gives them a lot of confidence and excitement for moving forward. Yeah, uh, you know, with uh, you know with, with this particular team, I mean, you, you beat Minnesota Duluth. Uh, now you've got a win over the Gophers. Uh, sure seems like you guys are trending in the right direction. What are things that have been maybe a little bit different or a little bit better, I guess, with this particular uh, team for you guys? Uh, I think it's just kind of a relentless, relentlessness on the puck. Like, we got – Three, three solid lines that are just hard on pucks and hard to play against. So we kind of preach um, staying hard on the puck, and, and Coach likes to use the term murmurate, which nobody knows what that means, <laughs> but it's like how birds kind of always <laughs> swarm around together. So we use that term, and the new players are like, wait, what? Am I supposed to know what that word is? But like we just stay hard on the puck, and I think a um, few players were able to score some goals early on, and that just kind of gives them the – okay, I mean, take a breath, I can score, I'm, I'm able to score at this level, and I think we've been able to pop a few, and people keep getting more confident in their abilities, and it's, it's exciting to see, because I think as a coach, you see potential in players, and like, want success for them, but it's, they got to believe it themselves to kind of get themselves there, so. We are uh, set up live in a classroom here at Minnesota State Mankato, and thanks to the folks at MSU for uh, giving us the space. I didn't know we would be studying vocabulary, but now we've got a new word <laughs> added to it. I, I did not know that word. Yeah. See, yeah. We learned a lot from John here today. Here we, we, when we come back to campus, we learn things. That's what happens, you know. I never listened in class when I was in college, but uh, no, that's good. Um, let's talk about Saturday's game, just because it seems like one of those situations where you've got to lead, you're playing well in, in a good team's building, and then all of a sudden the Gophers come back and tie. You know, the natural feeling is, okay, we gave it a best shot. You know, it's not going to happen. What happened between the third period and overtime to kind of get the team to keep believing? I don't think they ever had a feeling of, like, we're going to get behind in this game. You know, I, we score the power play goal early where Charlotte Akervic just shoots a bomb, which she's capable of shooting the puck hard all the time, and, and it finds a hole and, and goes top corner, and then – uh, Kelsey makes a great play to her to to Charlotte to score the second one and beauty on the two on one and I don't think ever you know in the second period we gave up a couple but everybody's like all right let's keep going let's keep pushing and then Jess Condis scores you know rips one low over the pad and and puts us up and even giving up the fourth one to let them tie it I, there was never the feeling on the bench that we weren't going to win the game so that's great. Why that happened that day, I have no idea, but it was it was pretty pretty awesome. Hockey Day Minnesota coming here, you and I, I had forgotten this as well, but uh, your team actually has played in, in a couple of hockey days now. You're, you played up in Bemidji a couple of years ago. What do you remember about uh, just that experience, Sherry? I remember just we played in St. Cloud the day before and just bust up, uh, you know, Friday night, got in late. And it was like it was cold. I know the Bemidji men played outside, and they're like, "Wow, it's it's cold out tonight." <laughs> and then you know, checking your weather app, and I think it was like minus 28 in the morning. And the boys' teams went out, and we're like, "All right, 
benches are heated. Uh, we got great outfits, good hats. We're gonna at least look good on the bench, <laughs> and we'll stay warm. Uh, but never want, like never felt cold. Surprisingly, uh, the fans looked like maybe they felt differently. <laughs> but the be the bench was a cozy spot to be, and it was it was awesome. The sun was shining. The the fans were pretty rowdy, and and our girls were fired up to play. So I, I'm looking forward to the the players that played in it already to get another crack, and the the newbies to have that experience and especially right on campus. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean just to be, to be a part of, you know, this has really become kind of such a, a big celebration of, of hockey in this state. I mean, what what's it like, you know, just to be, you know, a part of it again and and you know, and to to be a participant of it because I don't think not many people get that opportunity, Sherry. You know? right. I mean, what's that experience like? Uh, it's been cool. Like my squirt, my son Tucker played on uh, Sunday afternoon. And I think he thought it was cool, but I don't know if we, they understand, like, this might be your one opportunity <laughs> yeah. to play in this. You know, a lot of people never get that opportunity. And uh, my husband's men's league squad won, the, won their trophy on Sunday <laughs> night. They were pretty fired up, uh, their Stanley Cup. So <laughs> that was, they, they had that opportunity. Um, my two mites will play uh, Sunday morning prior to the alumni game. So. Will like whole families getting the the chance to skate out there and and it's 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 cool because it's every night there's somebody that you know that I know or family knows that's playing out of the rink and hey we got to get out there to see this kid this kid this kid so it's it's been fun we're trying to take it all in while it's here. My uh, my dad's from just down the road in Wasika originally. I used to go there in the 80s for Christmas to spend time with my grandparents and stuff. And I would bring my hockey gear and I would go skate and. People would kind of look at me like, what's that guy doing? <laughs> I mean, hockey was not a huge part of the culture in southern Minnesota 30 or 40 years ago. How has it changed now? It really seems like uh, people are getting out on the ice, the, the success of the Mavericks men, the success of your team. I mean, uh, it, do you see it growing in popularity in this region? It, it seems like it. I don't, I don't know if it's been the last couple of years with, you know, the whole COVID situation that everybody's got a rink out behind their house. But it <laughs> seems like everywhere you turn, there's like, a backyard rink and then there's kids that are like they have their backyard rink but I'm going to this guy's house cuz all my buddies are going there so they, they seem to be kind of all over the place right now and it's it's awesome to see just people that maybe aren't even hockey players so to speak that are grabbing a stick and getting out and playing and and having fun and starting to love the game as much as kind of us hockey people do. <laughs> are, are you helping coach your, your, your son's teams then? Uh, uh, you know, were, were you behind the bench then for your son? Uh, no, my husband was behind the bench for that game. Um, I actually went out with the, the squirt team in practice with my goal equipment on on Monday night to <laughs> kind of make sure there wasn't too much rust or any <laughs> too busted up <laughs> straps that I need repaired before our alumni game. But he coaches the squirts and then uh, we kind of tag team and help out with the mites when we can. So one of us tries to jump out and um, with my daughter's group or uh, cruise my little guy's group. So we kind of both go out with, with them, um, but he, he does the squirts. You mentioned your uh, your goalie pads, obviously a former goalie. Uh, apparently we found out earlier this season you don't have any eligibility left, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you, you, you would have been in between the pipes had, had, had it been possible, right? Uh, yeah, we did a, did a little research, but I guess the <laughs> I tried to get a COVID year back, but <laughs> I guess that expired. So, just describe you know that that whole situation though. You know, I mean, what what, what uh, you know, you guys got put in a, an amazingly <laughs> tough spot, and you know, you you were able to get creative and and, and found a way to, to to actually play a couple games against Ohio State. Well, I think it was like just Cal getting hurt in St. Cloud, and like, wait, she can't play. All right, like. Emerald, you're up. You know, she plays the third, and then I think on Monday I find out, like, she tore up her – like, I knew she came out with an ice bag, but I'm mm -hmm. like, that could be – she made a save. Um, right. But then Monday you find out she's having surgery and the next day, and it's like, whoa, okay, <laughs> now what? So at practice, um, I know Goose had texted a couple people, we got any goalies that are here at school, and then I asked some of our players just kind of in line – for shooting drills, hey, you guys got any buddies that play goal? We need one. And they're like, what? And I'm like, Emerald's out. Like, she's having surgery. 
And they're like, oh, yeah. I know Shelby Gatorbs and one of her freshmen was like, yeah, Avery, she lives on her floor. And then she, like, <laughs> took off in the shooting drill. So then I had to drift over where she ends up. And I'm like, who? She's like, Avery Stilwell. She played at Litchfield. I'm like, okay, yeah, I recognize the name. Mm -hmm. So then turns out she's a tennis player and a top-end tennis play here, player here at Minnesota State. So we had to, you know, go through her coach and kind of – Here's the plan. She's not going to have to play. She's just going to back <laughs> up because I think we had the next weekend off. Calla will be back. Yeah. Well, then like the day before we're flying to Ohio State, Calla's not back. She's mm -hmm. she's out the weekend, so kind of called up a, Avery. A, a little overpromising when you were recruiting there. Maybe maybe <laughs> right. just a little bit. <laughs> but you like n never thought it would, you know, thought she'd open the door and just mm -hmm. have the experience of the travel. But we're like, listen, either if you're on board and you want to play, we're going, and if you don't feel com comfortable, because she'd practice for like 35 minutes up to that <laughs> point, you know, with our group, and she's like, "No, that's exciting. That's a great, you know, great experience for me. I'm in." So we're like, "All right, we're going." So her family came along and um, or traveled there, and it was aw like she was lights out on Friday night. She played unbelievable, and it was like, "Wow!" Like <laughs> you're just you're a competitor and you're an athlete, just like your you know coach tennis coach told us like you're gonna love this kid and, and she was great so I, I, you know for somebody that that played at, at this level and played as well as you did I mean I, I would imagine for you you were sitting there going wow I'm just <laughs> what is she what is she gonna see here this I, I would imagine there was right. a, a, a holy crap moment for, right. for you you know when you well yeah there. I was like okay we're I don't think she really knows what she's getting <laughs> into and maybe we're not gonna let her know like we're going to Columbus um, and they're a physical team and they go hard to the net and they're gonna shoot from everywhere and they're number two in the country but we'll just let that slide and and other but, than that it'll be easy but other than that we're good I mean we'll just march in there but she was awesome and and after the the first game i think she got like player of the game and then she has to pass it off to the next person and and she's like i don't really know if i know this girl's name but at Buterac, like don't know her first name but Buterac seven so it was, it was pretty funny like she didn't she'd met a, everybody on our team for like three days and then like here you go but it, it was cool um and i'm excited like she's a mav alum you know once she's done with her tennis we'll hopefully have her back for minnesota state hockey alumni stuff and she'll have a story to tell for sure down the road mm -hmm. that's mick hatton i'm jess myers we're at hockey day minnesota in mankato we're talking with sherry dickerman the assistant coach for the msu mavericks women's team um i've got to ask you know because i cover the minnesota gophers men's team primarily they've just gone through a pretty abrupt changing goal as well with jack lafontaine signing a pro contract and one thing I heard from the rest of the team is kind of this intent to rally around Justin Close, who is now their starter. Did you get that sense from your team going through all these changes that, hey, whoever's back there, you know, we're, we're going to make it work. We're going to rally around them and do what we can. Or, or, you know, what was kind of the attitude at that point? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> like our, our team, the Ohio State weekend, we're just grateful that we are going to get to play games because <laughs> if, if Avery wasn't, you know, comfortable with it, then those games were out. And we know how um, quickly things change. So... Um, our team was just like, all right, guys, let's compete hard for pucks, block shots, do everything we do to let her see the puck and keep it outside. And, and I think um, that was awesome to see, too. And it, maybe that adversity helped our team kind of get to where we're at right now, where we're playing a really selfless brand of hockey. So. Sure. Uh, now, Sherry and I have known each other for a, a long time. We, uh, Sherry was actually uh, in, in high school, and I came back, and I started working for the St. Cloud newspaper, and I was uh, the high school reporter, and we would run, we'd have all area teams, and the first time that we ever had an all area girls hockey team, Sherry was our, our ended up being our player of the year. And uh, Sherry went, uh, played for River Lakes, which, uh, I'm trying to think of all the different schools that are in that co-op, but it's, uh, you know, Recorey High School and, and Painesville and I think some, maybe even some Melrose and Albany kids. I mean, kind of sprinkled. London Spicer, I think we were kind of everybody. <laughs> yeah. St. John's Prep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so anyway, so I, I, I remember talking with Sherry for, for the story about her being, uh, you know, the player of the year. And Sherry said, well, I, I, I'm actually like, in the arena, like you can see me in the arena where I play at. And I said, 
what are you talking about? And she said, well, there's a big mural <laughs> of the players at, at, at the arena. Well, describe for everybody, I guess. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, it was like the rink was like cinder block walls and then they <laughs> threw up like, you know, paint on it. And, and it's super nice now. I haven't been in it. I know they redid it, um, but they had this mural up there and it was actually, uh, my sister has the blonde po ponytail <laughs> hanging out and then in the goalie gets his little brown ponytail <laughs> out and then uh, my brother net front is i think cross-checking <laughs> somebody uh, from an opposing team so it was like the three of us because my parents did a lot with the the getting the rink going there so it's it's i think it's still there maybe not but yeah it was it was kind of funny and it's, <laughs> it's it's in richmond right yes yes, yes. and uh uh, how did you, you know? How did your family get so involved in hockey? Because when, when uh, honestly, when, when people think of Rocory High School, where, where you went to, to, to school, people think basketball. I mean, right. there's been really good boys and girls basketball uh, there. Uh, how did you get involved in hockey? Uh, you know, I think it was just the outdoor rink it was mm. three, four blocks from home, and they didn't really always plow the roads real great in Richmond, so we could just, I would literally skate down the road. Like, <laughs> usually when my brother and sister, they're, uh, my brother's six years older than me, his sister three years older than me, and they make me be goalie um, <laughs> outside, which thanks now, I guess. <laughs> but um, I'd start crying because for whatever reason, and I'd just skate, skate home um, down the road. But uh, we just started playing outside. We'd like load up all our gear and those two would kind of sometimes pedal a bike mm -hmm. and I'd ride on a sled behind if we we're bringing equipment and it was there where we all started to love hockey. I think my dad played basketball and and I played basketball actually until uh, 10th grade and then mm -hmm. we got varsity girls hockey. Um, I did both until then and then <laughs> a couple of my basketball teammates also came to I played hockey too, so it, it was it was a basketball spot, but I think the outdoor rink is what turned us into hockey players for whatever reason and just fell in love are. with it. <laughs> yeah. You uh you played in the WCHA, now you're a, a coach in the WCHA. Let's talk about the conference a little bit because I really think it's kind of cool the way it's evolving, not only with the addition of St. Thomas, but um, as I was saying to John Arrington, you know, it used to be the big two. It was either Minnesota or Wisconsin every year, and then you know, Minnesota Duluth emerges now and then. Ohio State is emerging. You know, last weekend proves anybody can beat anybody on any given night. Just how tough is this conference top to bottom now to be to be a coach and a recruiter in? Uh, yeah, I, I've always kind of, maybe I'm biased because I played in the league way back when it started, but it's it's been the best, I think. Um, the best players play in it, and it's a hard brand of hockey. Like, people play physical and people compete and I mean, when you're on the ice, I feel like you kind of hate each other. And then when you're not <laughs> playing, that you 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 respect each other and sometimes have friends on other teams. But it's every game is a battle, and you, you just can't ever overlook anybody. Or I mean, it's you see it every, all the time where oh, this team beat this time team, or they went to overtime, or the shootout with you know the top team and the bottom team. It it doesn't matter where kind of people are in the standings. It's every weekend there's a, a, a battle coming and, and I think it's fun to watch and it's it's nice to see more bottom teams able, able to knock off kind of the, the top teams so to speak and, and it's shuffles. How did you end up uh, at, at Minnesota State? Uh, how, how did, how, what, what was what, the, what was the path? <laughs> yes, what was, what was the path um, for you? Okay, so those people that know me know I'm like don't ever get too worked up over anything and just <laughs> things will work out the way they're supposed to work out like that's just kind of my mentality if you're in goal, by the right way. Yeah. which <laughs> maybe that was part of it but um you know i i wanted to play college hockey i didn't i didn't really care so much where but i wanted an opportunity um and then it was kind of my senior year i think in like april which is unheard of now but <laughs> I know my sister was going to be a senior at St. Ben, so like that was, I maybe was going to end up there, but I would have been playing in the rink in Richmond for <laughs> like my hometown for college. So it was like, let me see if there's an opportunity division one. Um, Cause I think I can play that, that level, but I want to just find out for sure. So I know I, I looked into some other teams in the WCHA, but uh, Todd Carroll called me, I think one of their goalies, 
was not coming back or you know had me visit um, I knew this place from coming to hockey camp in middle mm -hmm. school uh, with Troy Judding and Eric Means and and Ryan Rintoul if you mm -hmm. remember you mm -hmm. know those guys were um, coaching and and always had an awesome experience down here and I visited and you know they offered me a spot on the team like you can earn playing time give you an opportunity and I was like all right that's all I want and if it doesn't work out and people prove me wrong I can't play here I can always go to division three I can mm -hmm. find somewhere else to go and I guess it worked out <laughs> so, so did you end up walking on then officially then or? Uh, I think I pencils and erasers or something <laughs> it was my scholarship the first year but I just I just wanted an opportunity. They and offered you the pencil. You <laughs> held out for the erasers, right? You exactly. said, I'm going to need the erasers or it's no deal. Right. I make a couple mistakes. I probably need the erasers. No, but I, I just wanted the opportunity, and, and it was there, and I met some awesome teammates. I mean, we didn't have a lot of success that first year, but it was playing in the best league and, and getting opportunities and getting better and kind of trusted that more recruits would come, and, mm -hmm. and it seemed to work out so and and you ended up being an all it, it worked out pretty well for you <laughs> sherry you ended up being a, an all-american here at, at, at uh, minnesota state and uh just what, what was that experience like for you i mean to as you're describing how you ended up here to go from that to end up uh you know becoming an all-american that had to be just an amazing uh, moment uh i i guess my like last year my kind of goal was like this is going to be the best year of my, I mean, this is what I got. I need to make this the best year of my career. Mm -hmm. And um, the first weekend of the season, uh, we swept Duluth, who had won three national titles in a row. And I think after that, I mean, I was confident that we could, we'd be better because mm -hmm. we had some good young players. And um, I think after that happened, more of our team and we had some freshmen on that team that were contributors that probably had no clue any different mm -hmm. um, but that was like I think the turning point depended on how that first weekend was going to go was mm -hmm. kind of the trajectory of the, of the season and, it, and obviously we won two I think there was four three and three two and then uh, you know I, re I remember being in Lake Placid actually the after the season for a tryout for Worlds or something, and I, I don't even know if I really knew what an All-American was, but <laughs> Kelly Halsasak, who was also, a, she was a defenseman, and she's like, hey, congrats, we're on the All-America team, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so then I had to, like, you know, Google it in the lounge over there, and I was like, huh, all right, well, that's cool. <laughs> so I guess, I guess I didn't really know that it, w it was a possibility of happening, or, um, but it, it's, now, as I've, you know, gotten older and been around a little more, I'm like, well, that is kind of <laughs> impressive to, to to be. And then in the group who I was with at that time were a lot of Canadian or U.S. national team players. So mm -hmm. I guess it was it was cool, but I had no idea like it was coming or <laughs> or what that it, it wasn't that, yeah or that it was kind of a big deal. <laughs> Sherry, thinking again about the WCHA, and you can answer this question either as a former player or as a coach, or both. Favorite rink to play in, least favorite rink to play in. <laughs> you know, and, and there are some great rinks in the WCHA, obviously, but you know, what, what's your perspective as, as somebody coming in to, as a visitor to <laughs> Le Bon or to Ritter or to Amsoil, right. one of those places? Where, where do you like to play? Um, where do you not like to play? <clears throat> uh, I think most people would agree I don't like playing at Ohio State <laughs> I, like the stairs and the I just am not a big fan um, as a player I actually loved playing at All Seasons Arena um, I could look past the exterior and I just <laughs> like the the ice surface and people were right on top of the on top of the rink um, now I would say like our facility's awesome and I always remind our players like Listen, I know where we came from. You guys are spoiled. Like, I hope you really appreciate what we have now. Even our whole campus is like night and day. So I, I would say, uh, don't like playing in Ohio State's <laughs> rank. And I, I really am a big fan of the rank here at Minnesota State. I, I've got to say, when I think of Ohio State, I think back two years ago to Hockey Day, Minnesota. Ohio State played the Gophers outside in Minneapolis. It was a cold night. It was below zero. Well, you talk about being on the bench and dressing up warm and all that. Nadine Muzzerall, who has done some great stuff as a coach, you know, a fantastic recruiter, was a great player for the Gophers. She came out 
and she looked fantastic, but she looked like she was going to like a fashion shoot or mm -hmm. something, you know. Had the hair, had the makeup, mm -hmm. you know, nice, almost like a blazer on. And, you know, they, they played a good game, they gave the Gophers a good run, and I saw her after the game waiting to interview her, and she was taking the microphone off and all that, and I realized she was shivering uncontrollably. So <laughs> there's a fine line between looking fantastic <laughs> like she did and dressing for the weather. So that, that's my only advice uh, for you guys on the bench. All right, well, I'm, I'm not really concerned about the hair and makeup I'm gonna be doing, uh, but uh, I think we'll be dressed appropriately <laughs> for the weather here on Sunday. Good idea. What's, uh, you know, what, what's it like, you know, just getting uh, on the ice with, it, with your kids? I mean, you, you've coached now for quite a, quite a long time at, at a very high level, uh, but, but to coach your kids a little bit and, and to be on the ice with them, what, what's that experience like for you? Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like, my favorite is when we just go out in our backyard. We have a rink that's not too big, but it's it's big enough, and just like it gets me excited that they're like, "Hey, can we go skate?" Like a couple of days, it was like twenty below, and I'm like, "No, not today." <laughs> Come on! So cruising at my five year old, I'm like, "All right, you really want to skate? Let's go!" So we put our stuff on, and we lasted like ten minutes. He wanted to stay, but I was like, "Okay, you don't understand what it's gonna feel like when you warm up again." So um, it's awesome that they're. Um, loving the game I can tell they like enjoy it and they just want to go kind of mess around and they they come up with their okay now we're doing this drill <laughs> they kind of gg my eight-year-old and cruise five they they kind of compete over who gets to set up the next drill we're going to do in the backyard <laughs> so it's it's awesome that they kind of pay attention enough <laughs> it's might practice to come up with the drills <laughs> when we come at, come home and then uh, that they actually want to do it and work on stuff at home so it's it's a lot of fun and I hope that they're um, enjoying it as much as I am and continue to develop their passion for the game because it's been awesome. So being a hockey mom, everything you thought it would be so far, <laughs> give us your assessment. Uh, I don't know if I'm right there yet. I, I try to not yell too much. I know a lot of <laughs> hockey moms kind of battle for the loudest voice. Um, I just try to let them play and, and hope they enjoy it and, and remember that you know the squirts when I'm watching them they're 10 and 11 and they're doing the best they can and um, just I haven't quite wrapped myself in blankets and done all that stuff and uh, do you drive a minivan no no <laughs> wow <refuse>. no <laughs> I'll never that, have that, a that might actually be a violation of something. I know. <laughs> Soccer mom, too, so that really throws you <laughs> for a loop that I don't have a van. But no, I refuse to drive a minivan. Besides basketball and hockey, did you play other sports things uh, growing up as well? Or? Yeah, I was actually uh, a diver in high school. and I started that in seventh grade, and I was kind of like the neighborhood kids called me shrimp. Um, <laughs> so I hit a growth spurt, obviously. Um, but I swam some relays, too, and then I also played softball. So it was kind of small town that whatever season it is, hey, we need you to play. So uh, I kind of enjoyed all kinds of different sports and try to keep it fresh, I guess, do new things and take a break from hockey when it's not hockey season. Well, and that's what, you know, I, 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 I try to tell a lot of hockey people this, but uh, I, I've talked to a lot of college hockey coaches and one of the big things that they'll, they'll say is, I, I want to see that this kid has played something other than hockey like their entire life. Uh, is that something that, that, that holds true, I guess, with kids that you're looking at a lot? Or Yeah, I think so. I mean, I already see it with my son who, like I said, he's a squirt, and there's mm -hmm. people that are, hey, are you doing this? Are you doing uh, No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, not. He can maybe wants to do it, but not right now. We'll give him, you know, play soccer in the spring and the mm -hmm. summer, and then we'll – do a camp here and there, work on our skating, but we're not doing it year round. Um, will it ever get to that point? I don't know, but I'm pretty like, no, we're not, <laughs> being those, I'm not doing it. So yeah. I believe like playing multiple sports helped me and I think it's beneficial to a lot of people and, and you still hear that from a lot of, you know, big time college players or mm -hmm. in any, any sport or, or even pros that they played multiple sports mm -hmm. growing up and threw this bag in the closet and started up this and it's awesome to hear and I'm trying to keep going down that path with my own kids but there's a lot of people that try to tell you different and mm -hmm. I'll try to keep my stubborn ways about that. <laughs> okay, one thing we've noticed, a lot of purple when we get here, mm -hmm. everywhere, the Mavericks and obviously then the Tommies this weekend as well. Uh, 
let's get a scouting report. Uh, uh, one game in, in the Twin Cities, one game down here against the Tommies. What are you expecting, and, and you know, how do you keep this momentum going that you got from the big win last weekend? Uh, I'm excited about it. I always actually joke with Beth, Bethany Browsen about the Purple Dazzlers, that I wear my shoes, she calls them the Purple Dazzlers, and when she took the job, I'm like, hey, but I'll let you know when I find a good deal on purple shoes. You're one of us now. All right. So I'm excited for, you know, a lot of purple. I know when we did the last home and home series with them, I was gone recruiting. So I didn't, all, all I've been told is just be prepared. That rink's cold, but <laughs> I think it might be colder at Blakesley on Sunday. So um, I'm excited for, for the opportunity to um, be on the bench against them. I think it'll be a great matchup. I'm excited they're part of our league. I think they'll, um, yeah, having eight teams is great, and I think they'll bring a lot to, to our, our league. So I look forward to um, seeing all the purple. <laughs> <laughs> what, were, what was the, the ice like for, your, for your, you know, your, your son? You said played out there. Was the ice decent, I guess, or was it okay when they were out he, there? Uh, <laughs> he didn't really say much. I think it was, seemed to be pretty good. Um, sounds awesome out there, and even the young kids, like how the puck kind of slaps the stick, it sounds a little different outside, and their skates cut in the ice. So it, it seems like it's been holding up pretty good, so we didn't get any complaints. Just yep. overall, this has got to be great fun for, for this community to, to have Hockey Day here, right? Oh, it's it's awesome. Like, I try to be going up there every night and uh, make, hauling the kids up, and next year they're going to be like, hey, when's that week <laughs> where we put the rink at Blakesley and we go up there for that? When is that going to happen? So they're going to kind of be <laughs> in for kind of a downer next <laughs> next winter when it doesn't happen. But um, it's awesome. You see, I see – Tons of people out there, even non-hockey people. So it's been good to hopefully we'll get more people coming out as the weekend progresses. I'm so excited for people from outside communities come in and, and see it and experience it because it's awesome. Yeah, I, I my my son was a, a first year squirt uh, when uh, Hockey Day Minnesota was in St. Cloud, and we ended up playing like on that Sunday morning after Hockey Day, and it was like eight in the morning or some ungodly time in the morning or whatever but you know we went out and I think we played a team from Moorhead and uh and my my son had a, you know he had a good time with it but I, I, for me like I'm old enough that we actually played out <laughs> I played house league hockey we played outdoors at Lake George and so like to have my son be there playing at Lake George uh it, it meant a lot to me at, at the time and to see him out there skating and stuff was like Holy smokes. I mean, you know, it's one of those things that you, were, you I know that you'll remember it forever. I right. Mean, you know. Yeah. I'm, like my cruise plays on Sunday morning at eight. He's yeah. got the eight thirty, and yeah, then Gigi's go. got the nine forty five. So I'll get to watch those two play before I get myself, get myself <laughs> out there and hope I survive my, my ice time. But it's, it's going to be awesome for those, those two to have that opportunity too. And, and the committee's done an awesome job of getting every youth, team out there and uh and then some neighboring communities have been able to come and bring their their teams into play so um the jerseys have been awesome the it's just it's it's great and i'm excited it's, it's right in our backyard here so i'm on day like i think day five here in my eight day bender i'm trying to go on um hopefully to survive and maybe coach harrington will give me a little free pass on monday to come to work a little bit later or something we'll see see if i need it as usual, 30 minutes just flies by when we start talking hockey. This has been fantastic. Sherry Dickerman, assistant coach for the MSU Mavericks women's team, which will be playing uh, at Blakesley Stadium on Sunday against the Tommies. Thanks for joining us. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Best of luck to you. Uh, Appreciate and, and, that. man, hey, Hockey Day Minnesota and Mankato. That's McHatton. I'm Jess Myers on The Rink Live. Catch all of our content on therinklive.com and lots more to come from Hockey Day in Mankato.